his family was a true indicator that her brother was not hiding out, planning to return home one day. As time went on, I kind of started accepting it because he would not do that to my mom, and he would not leave his daughter, she says. Saying that um, it was a difficult time for the families involved is an understatement. Never want to get into a fight before her brother disappeared. I'm going to murder this, um, Siobhan, S-I-O-B-H-A-N, I know that's wrong, I should have googled it, his sister said that she fought her way through her teenage years when kids would laugh at her and make comments about the fact that her brother was dead, teenage kids are so cruel, it's not something you want to see any teenage girl do is fight all the time, but I thought that everyone was out to get me and did not understand me. She and her family did the best that they could to keep Jay's memory al alive for his daughter. Her mom always had pictures in her room of Jay, she says, of the mother of Jay's daughter, who's now a young woman. His daughter has always been at the beach there on his birthday. Each of the families gather on March 17th at Frenchman's Bay to remember the boys and keep their memory alive. I think it's important to keep it out there and in the public because someone might know something that has some truth to it. They might look at their picture after all these years and think, maybe I should speak up. Patricia will always have some hope that her son will come home, but she knows that he would not have abandoned his family. I hope we bring him home either way so I can say goodbye and for my girls because they've gone through a lot too. They want answers to questions that they have not been able to shake from their mind. The video that captured the boys at the marina the morning that they disappeared did not provide many answers. I think the one thing that's always bothered us is the security camera of the marina. They only caught three of them. And why weren't there six? Where are the other three boys? Where is the boat? Why haven't the bodies, at least one of them, surfaced? Years after the disappearance of these boys, pants that closely resembled the pair that Jay was wearing the night he disappeared were found in the Niagara River. They contained remains, but DNA has not been extracted. There are literally hundreds of questions I have that I've actually put to police, and they've not responded to those requests. Why? The families of the missing teens and a private investigator question why police took 36 hours to begin the search after Jay, Chad, Robbie, Michael, Danny, and Jamie went missing. They wonder what happened to some of the evidence and what more could have been done to find the boys. Some of them were no strangers to the police. There's too much that is hidden here, too much not being said, Bruce Ricketts, private investigator, said. The police did not take any of the reports seriously, said Jay's sister, Amanda. As I said before, the boys are believed to have stolen a Boston Whaler replica and a water tricycle from two different marinas and taken them for a ride. They reportedly left the party at 12.40 a.m. The surveillance camera caught them at 1.48. One or more witnesses heard a boat on the lake between 2 and 3 a.m. And at 3 a.m., two teenagers reported them missing. I don't know who that was. I, I Was it one of the... I don't know. I couldn't find out who that was. By 2 p.m. on March 19th, the search was underway. It involved several police forces and the military, and it was called off the next day. But police did follow up on some leads. Questions to Durham Regional Police were unanswered, as the original investigators are not on the force anymore. But still, police urge people with any information to come forward. Officers are, of course, aware that this is a cold case, and we're hoping that if anyone has any information on the disappearance of these boys, they contact the Durham Regional Police Service. Any small piece of evidence that would benefit this investigation. Someone has something very small they think is insignificant, that something could turn the whole case around and lead us in the right direction. I don't know how many times I've said that. If you know even the smallest, tiniest, 
this little thing. Please report it. And I'm so sorry if you can hear that siren. Private investigator Bruce Ricketts has been looking into this case at no charge for more than six years. He states that he has faced constant roadblocks and much of the information that he's received from police through the Freedom of Information requests is heavily redacted. They will not allow anyone to take a second look at the evidence, he says. And again, that only three of the boys were spotted on the marina camera really puzzles people. Family members watched this video in 1995 and identified the teens as Jamie, Robbie, and Michael. There's no footage of them stealing a boat, but when family asked to view the tape again, police told them that they did not have it. How do you say that something's not there that people have seen? The family questions. Neither stolen vessel has been found. According to an FOI document, an employee from the East Shore Marina said that the Boston Whaler replica was deemed unsinkable by many, was built well, but in rough shape. It would sink, but over a period of time. Private investigator Ricketts wonders how no one spotted the boat if it did not sink immediately. He found in his investigation that there were some possible sightings and a company that specializes in underwater searches using technology called side scan sonar was asked by police to search after a possible boat sighting was reported. But he says that before the company even had a chance to start the search, the contract between the police and the sonar company was canceled, which I find really kind of fishy. No pun intended. A gas can that was found in Wilson, New York, and believed to have belonged to the stolen boat. Ricketts wonders how the gas can got there, considering that a witness stated, based on the current and wind that day, the boat would have ended up in Rochester, New York, which is 120 kilometers east. FOI documents show possible sightings of the boys. Some put boys in Q Beach, Toronto, near the home of Jamie, days after the disappearance, but one witness said she spotted Jamie in a Burger King near Clarence, New York, March 19th. Another person said she saw Chad at his home on March 17th. The families don't read too much into them, and again are convinced that Jay would just not up and leave his family and daughter. But they're not convinced that they simply went for a joy ride and drowned. They believe there's something more that happened that night. Jay's sister Amanda said that she knows that they have stolen boats in the past. It's not out of ordinary that that would happen, but she does believe they did drown. But something still doesn't sit right. She doesn't understand how they never found anything. Private investigator Ricketts questioned if drugs had anything to do with it. The area was a hot spot at one point in time. There was an awful lot of smuggling going on from Durham to that area of New York and back. And this is one of many questions that he has put forward to the police. I think that it will take reopening the entire case, a reevaluation of all the evidence that has existed, said private investigator Ricketts. The Boyle family and Ricketts have been piecing information together from a separate case, one that they may believe was connected to Jay. We're going to talk about the pants again. In 1998, two sets of remains, one in a pair of red pants, were found in the Niagara River. And like I said before, Jay was wearing these red Levi's when he dis- was wearing red Levi's when he disappeared. But 
basement and walk around and enter here. To private investigator Ricketts, a positive ID on Jay Boyle would open a whole new can of fish. How did his body end up in the river if he was lost on Lake Ontario? The physics just aren't there. Police are also anxious to learn the identity of the remains. I cannot say that it is not the remains of Jay Boyle, but it is highly unlikely. But we are still moving forward to 100% exclude him if that information is correct. For the Boyle family, if the remains turn out to belong to Jay, at least there would be some closure. When asked for confirmation, forensic anthropologist Kathy Grusbeer wrote in an email, We are unable to publicly release information about any of our death investigations. Lee says, hypothetically, if the remains do belong to Jay, NRPS would conduct an investigation. He did note that when they examined the bones at the forensic autopsy, there were no obvious signs of foul play. Amanda, his sister, said, Jay has been ruled out as the second set of remains found in Niagara. Their mother submitted a piece of his umbilical cord to create his DNA profile. They hope that the other families that haven't yet will also submit their DNA as well. She stated that a new legislation, legislation, that's a fun one, known as Lindsay's Law, which has created a new DNA-based national missing persons database, may now provide a chance that one of the boys will one day be identified. I looked everywhere and could not find the results of the DNA from those pants. That was found in 2014. I could not find anything. This is one of those cases. Six boys went missing. I can't tell you anything about any of them except that Jay Boyle had a daughter. And he loved to play baseball and he was pretty good at it. It, it happened in 1995. I, it makes me so absolutely miserable that I cannot give you more information on these six boys. What did they look like? What did they like? What, why were there only three of them on the camera? Why, how do you lose a boat and a three wheel or a thing? I don't, Anyway, like I said, I was unsure if I wanted to do this video because you guys know how I am about victims. I mean, they are victims of something, whether it's they got drunk and fell off the boat. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I think it's weird that only three of them were caught on camera. Where were the other three? Were they even there? Did something happen to them before they got there? I hate not knowing, and it drives me absolutely insane. Have you guys heard of this case? Um, I think it's weird that Jay was ruled out.